on recording. Okay. My name is Dr. Jackie Jacob. I am the coordinator for the Small and Backyard Flocks Community of Practice on eExtension, which is the uh, National Cooperative Extension Services online uh, extension programming. Um, every month we try to have a different webinar on a variety of topics of interest to small and backyard flock owners. Um, I'm also a, an extension specialist at the University of Kentucky. Our uh, presentation for today is going to be on how to perform a simple avian necropsy. And Dr. David Frame, a veterinarian from Utah State University, will be doing the presentation. Um, this is being recorded. And um, if you have any questions, please put them in either the webinar chat area or in the Q&A, um, and we will uh, make sure your questions get answered. If the question um, is relevant to what Dr. Frame is talking about at that particular period of time when it's asked, I will pop in and uh, inter interrupt him. So David, if you see me pop up, that means there's a question. Um, if not, I will stay silent and hold the question till the end. So, um, David, it's all yours. I'm going to go on mute and uh, let you take over. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Okay, I finally figured it out. Okay. Well, thanks, Jackie. Um, my name is David Frame. I'm the um, Extension Poultry Specialist for Utah State University. I am also a veterinarian and a diagnostician with the um, Utah Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. And my goal there, actually my, my uh, job is to uh, do the poultry work that comes into our laboratory. And so today, what we're going to visit about is, is looking to, to open up a bird and um, be able to hopefully, at the end of this thing, the objective is that you'll know what normal looks like so that um, if you see anything abnormal, you don't necessarily need to know what that is. You just need to know that you need to uh, probably have that looked at by a by an expert uh, in order to find out what your problem is. Now this is going to be geared more towards the the, the small flock owner today, um, simply because if if it's a pet bird, you know one necropsy on a pet bird isn't really going to tell you a lot, and you'd probably either want um, a, a qualified veterinarian to look at that, or else uh, you know you, you just get another pet bird, but uh, what we're talking about is uh, uh, maybe the, the small farm flock uh, that uh, will have a, a certain amount of mortality, and as unfortunate as it is, when you raise chickens or, or any types of, of birds, there's going to be a certain amount that are going to, uh, to pass away at, a, at any given time. And so if you start seeing a bunch of them, then that's when you better start uh, looking at it to see if there's any kind of a disease problem involved there. The um, objectives then are really to kind of to become familiar with the basic anatomy of the chicken and learn how to properly open it up, not only so that you can look at everything, but also so that you can keep yourself um, safe. Uh, we're talking about bio safety here and, and biosecurity. And then also just to become familiar with what normal organs and tissues in a bird look like. It's obviously not to become a, an avian expert or diagnostician, just, to, just so that you can see what the normal is so that if you do see something that is abnormal, uh, for instance, the liver doesn't look right, it's a different color or it's got spots on it or something that uh, you know that the, the normal shouldn't have, then you can um, 
find the proper diagnostic help at your local diagnostic laboratory or with your veterinarian. Now birds come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. Up here we have a pigeon a skeleton and over here we have a, a goose skeleton and you can appreciate that uh, there are some differences in anatomy there. The uh, neck is much longer than a goose. You have a much larger sternum or breastbone in a pigeon and some of the, the long bones are a little differently shaped too. But um, generally speaking all birds have similar types of anatomy. Today we're going to look specifically at the, the chicken and, um, and that's what most, most folks will have as small flocks either for, uh, this is a meat type chicken, or if you have small flocks for layers um, where you uh, sell eggs maybe at a farmer's market or something like that. The, the tools are really very simple. Um, all you need is a sharp knife, and I emphasize sharp. You want to make sure that uh, you can, when you're ready to cut, it's going to cut. And um, there's a there's a variety of uh, shears that are available um, that really work well. They're just sort of like uh, fortified scissors, and uh, they'll cut through the the bones and the ribs and things like that that uh, normal scissors won't cut through. And so if you can find yourself um, a set of those, that's going to help out uh, a lot in, in being able to have it uh, work a lot easier for you. And then just um, some tissue scissors of some sort. Um, you can buy these at instrument supply companies. And, um, and then some, some uh, forceps, we call them. They look sort of like tweezers, don't they? But we call them forceps. And if you can get ones with mouse toothed ends on that, that'll grab the tissue, uh, that'll work even better. And so you can kind of use that as an extension of your, of your fingernails or of your hand to be able to, to move things around. So it's really not that, um, that much uh, equipment that you, that you need. Um, sometimes a wooden block of some sort might help that uh, will allow you to uh, cut down onto it and so you don't cut into something metal with your, your knife and, and uh, dull the edge or something like that, but um, very simple type material. So the f we're gonna talk a little bit now about um, how to necropsy a bird, but the first and foremost thing is, is to protect yourself um, there's not a lot of diseases that can be transferred from uh, birds to human beings, but there are some. And so you want to take care in, in making sure you protect yourself and those around you as best you can uh, if you're opening a, a bird up. So that entails um, putting some gloves on, some waterproof gloves of some sort. And you can use um, the type that you get like uh, for washing dishes or you can get more fancy and, and buy a box of latex gloves or, or non-latex gloves, either one, um, to be able to, to wear so that you can um, uh, touch things without getting um, wet and blood and everything all over you. So that, that's very important. Some people like to wear a, a mask. I don't think that's necessarily um, critical. Um, however, one thing that will help keep down dust and dander and things like that is to uh, wet the feathers down with a little liquid dish soap and moisten with water before you, you start. And you can maybe use a little scrub brush to scrub through those feathers and, and, uh, and get them wet so that they, they kind of compact and the, and the dander doesn't fly all over the place. And it just makes not only more biosecure, but it makes it so you can see things a lot better too without having feathers flying around in, inside what you're trying to look at. So we get the bird on, on its back on a, on a cutting surface of some sort and this is um, the position that you'd want, want that bird laid in. Now it's going to continue to fall over to one side and the other if you uh, start just nilly-willy hacking away at it and so you want to uh, try to stabilize that a little bit. And by doing, um, by flaying the, the um, legs out, that kind of gives it a, a place to stand too. So um, as you're doing this, you just kind of cut the soft tissue with a knife here so that um, the legs will fall down and then just kind of pry them apart so that um, 
the joint of the, the femur up here comes out of the socket. And then spread the legs so that they lie flat. Uh, then you can start uh, working on, on other, other things. It's just a close up of one leg where you can see the femoral head has come out of the socket and it, uh, it'll hold the leg down. If you don't get that out of the socket, uh, it'll just kind of spring back up. Um, just kind of use a knife to get down around it and then just kind of put your hand on the back of the, the leg and, and pry it a little bit. Be careful that you don't break bones or anything that might, uh, that might uh, cut through your gloves or, or um, give you a cut there. But it, is, it does come out pretty, pretty simple. So once you get that out, now you've got your legs down and uh, just take the knife and kind of flay the, the skin back off the, the breast. And you can take um, a, a hand, usually I'll take the left hand uh, to be able to grab that skin and just kind of peel it back the rest of the way to leave the, um, the breast open. And, and at this point, you want to look at that breast and see, does that look like a normal uh, amount of muscles on the on there, um, is it really dark? Is it um, has it got any kind of uh, abnormal spots or um, discoloration in it? And did the skin peel off carefully or easily? If it uh, is really hard and the muscle is kind of kind of um, dry, uh, well, probably that bird was dehydrated, and so that's one thing it'll tell you there. On the previous slide, we can see up here that, that there's the crop, and that's the the uh, part of the digestive organ that uh, is tied in with the esophagus, and that's where the the bird will store feed to kind of soften it before it goes down the rest of the the gastrointestinal tract. And you want to look at that and uh, make sure that that's all kind of normal. Now this normal this crop is normal. You notice it hasn't got any feed in it, so this bird hasn't hasn't been eating, you know. In the, in the um, uh, within a little bit before it died, um, it's it's full of air, but you can see that how thin that that crop surface is, and it doesn't look like it's uh, really thick or have any kind of discoloration on it. Um, sometimes they'll get uh, some fungal infections in there, and it'll make that crop look like a kind of, we call it kind of a Turkish towel look to it. But um, here's a normal crop. That's what it would look like. It's right in the in the area between the two uh, halves of the breast, um, where those bones come up, and uh, take a look at that to make sure everything's okay. Then cut into it, and if there is feed in there, make sure it's normal type stuff. Um, not a lot of weeds or um, rocks or things that obviously shouldn't be there. So that's a good thing to look at. Now what I like to do is uh, turn the bird around and start working from the, the head area down. And one of the reasons I do this for, from a diagnostic standpoint is that uh, this is the clean end of the bird. And so if there's any kind of uh, cultures that I need to take um, further down the road on the liver or other internal organs, I haven't messed the intestines up and inadvertently cut them or anything like that to kind of, kind of contaminate things. So I like to start up here. I like to open the bird by um, going down the right side of the um, the beak and you just use your scissors and cut down through there. Uh, try, to keep, try to keep that as close to the surface of the skin as possible as you cut and cut parallel down the neck. And what it'll end up doing is, is opening up the, the neck area here where it'll show uh, two things that you're, you want to look for. The esophagus, and that's the part of the the digestive tract that uh, they swallow, the bird will swallow the feed into, and then it'll work its way down into the crop, and the crop would be further down there. Then the other thing is, is the trachea, and of course that's where um, the chicken breathes through, and the air goes down into its um, bronchi and into its lungs. And they're the two things you want to look at to make sure they're okay. Um, try not to cut into this, into the trachea if you can help it, um, mainly because you'll cut into it later and you want to know what, what you're cutting so that you can see it. So here we have the trachea that's still closed and then the esophagus. And this is a normal esophagus. It's got kind of a glistening 
mucus look to it. And you can see these little um, darker areas and they're glands uh, within the esophagus. Um, with vitamin A deficiency, uh, you'll start seeing a lot of um, rough looking white thickened esophagus. And, um, and so you, anything that doesn't look like this may, may be an indication of some, some type of problem. Um, it, it's rare that the esophagus will show much, but um, on occasion, particularly if they're exposed to, to uh, a vitamin deficiency or something, you can see a, a problem there. So now next, what you want to do is cut into the, the trachea. Just use that scissors and just kind of cut along there. And this is a beautiful trachea here. You want it to be clear. That you, there may be a little bit of glistening on the trachea, but you, there's not mucus in there. There's no uh, yellowish material. There's no um, cheesy stuff or th that has broken off that um, indicates that there's some uh, ne necrosis going on in there. And you'll notice these faint red areas are the tracheal rings, and this is cartilage in, inside the trachea. And this is what you want to look you want to see is little to no coloration in those um, in those rings. With some diseases, you'll you'll see a, a severe reddening of the tracheal um, lining, as well as these these areas will will be will stand out a lot more too. So this is uh, this is a beautiful trachea right here. This is what you want to see. Now, once you uh, look at the upper respiratory thing. Tract. One thing that I, I failed to, to mention, and let's, let's go back here a little bit too, is um, um, just take a knife and cut into those sinuses right there. Make sure there's not, um, not any kind of cheesy material in there, that the eye is not swollen or the area around the eye. And, um, and then also that there's no, no discharge, not a lot of um, mucus coming out of the, the nostrils. Um, and uh, that can indicate some, um, some problems. So you want to watch that. So after you look at the head area, let's get into the, um, get under the hood and look at the organs. And you, you'll take your uh, shears and kind of cut down the rib cage on both sides. And then you'll probably have to cut it off the, the bone right here in order to retract that whole breast. Um, part of it, but you retract that off to the left and then just leave it there somewhere so that um, it's out of the way. Then this will expose things to you. Now in this particular slide, what we can see is, uh, first of all, we can see the, the, the uh, end of the trachea coming down and that will eventually go into the lungs, which are on both sides. There's a lung right there and uh, there's one on the, on the left, on the right side too. The lungs in chickens are a lot different than lung than our lungs. Um, you know, ours is more like a balloon. We inhale and it expands, and um, and then it uh, it gives a negative pressure down there, and then then of course we exhale. Um, chickens don't have diaphragms, and so the um, partial pressure of both the abdomen and the thorax is the same. So they have to breathe a different way, and they actually breathe by um, moving this this breast um, bone with certain muscles back and forth like bellows. But these lungs are up inside the rib cage. They're not just out there. And uh, they don't expand and contract like ours do. And so they're going to be there all the time. And, and one thing that, that often happens with uh, certain uh, diseases is that it gets down inside those lungs and then it causes, causes them to, to kind of consolidate and, uh, and get, a, get a pneumonia. And so... Um, that's where they are. We'll, we'll see a better picture of them here in a minute. Also in this slide, we can see the heart. It's nested very nicely between two lobes of the liver. And then down below, we can see something sticking out right there, and that's our gizzard. So that's the, uh, the organ that grinds the feed. And, um, and if you buy a turkey or, or sometimes even a chicken, uh, they'll, they'll keep the the, the giblets in there, and that's part of that, that giblet package that you see. So in order to get into this thing without causing a lot of problems, um, birds will have air sacs, and they're very, very uh, thin tissues that actually hold the air before they, before they go into the lung. And, um, and along the, the left 
side, there's going to be an air sac right there that you want to detach that tissue and then any other kind of connecting stuff um, and do it with a finger so you, you don't take a knife and cut something uh, that you don't want to cut so that you can just kind of bluntly dissect that and get that out of the way. And then you just kind of lay everything off to your left. Uh, you can see that I've got a hold of the gizzard right there. And in the next slide, all that's been laid over so you can kind of see the inside. Now remember the, the heart was nested in between those liver lobes. You can still see the liver lobes over there. That's been moved over. Um, you can see the, the lung is deep inside the rib cage right there now. And so now we have a good view of some of the other organs. And the esophagus will eventually go into this organ, which is called the proventriculus, and that's like the true stomach of the bird. And then the the um, the feed eventually will will uh, go down into the gizzard, and then further down into the intestinal tract here. Intestinal tract of birds is very short compared to uh, mammals, uh, particularly things like uh, horses and and cows, which have a really long one. And so it's just amazing how efficient um, chickens can be in using their feed and, and actually converting it to either meat or to eggs. So once you get that open, you can see part of the air sac right here is just kind of a film. That's the way you want to see it. If it's um, if it's got a lot of, if you can't see through it, or even if you can't read newspaper through it, then it's too thick. Uh, also, sometimes you'll get a lot of uh, vasculation in there where you'll see blood vessels forming, and that's indication that it's uh, inflamed. And so something's going on with the respiratory system of, of the bird, if you see that type of thing. Um, the spleen should be about a third of the size of the proventriculus length. This one's a little bit larger than that, but it's it, it looks normal. So that's not a, I, I don't see anything wrong here, but uh, uh, that spleen, if it looks like it's uh, plum colored, or if it's got a lot of um, white spots in it, uh, or if it's really enlarged, then it's, it's becoming like the whole whole length of that thing or even two thirds of the length and that means that there's an infection going on in there. So spread open the abdominal cavity and now we've got the abdominal cavity spread open and we're going to look at a few uh, organs in here. If you remember uh, this this chicken had a very small comb way way back when we started opening the the beak and uh, that means that it uh, wasn't in lay. And so it could have either been, uh, this was actually a young pullet and that's the reason it wasn't in lay. But um, uh, we'll see that the ovary down here, and we'll see this in another slide too, that's the ovary of the chicken is, uh, is, not, is not active. But uh, first of all, let's look at some of these other organs. The heart is up here. Uh, it has a sac around it, it's called the pericardium. And that sac should be clear. Um, it shouldn't have a lot of fluid in it. It's going to have a little bit because that, that lubricates the heart as it beats. But if that is, is um, really opaque, if it looks white, if it's got uh, stuff that looks like grit on it, uh, uh, these are indications that something's wrong with the, with the pericardium and you've got an infection of some sort on there. The liver should be about this color. Now there's quite a lot of variation in normal livers. Uh, as far as color goes, but um, if the edges are not really sharp, like this edge is, um, if it's really a, an abnormally uh, red liver, uh, cherry red liver type thing, or if it's abnormally dark, or if it's mottled, these are indications that uh, there's some pathology going on in the liver. It also has a, a covering over it, and it's uh, normally really, really, uh, transparent and sometimes you'll get uh, you'll get some diseases that'll cause a white cheesy type stuff to come over the top of that. So now we have our proventriculus and if you remember that's the true stomach that's where it has the enzymes that'll start the digestion in the in the bird and then it goes down into the the gizzard and this is where the grinding takes place and uh, so the chicken will eat to small pieces of limestone or even rocks sometimes, uh, pebbles, and they'll lodge down in here and help uh, act as kind of the teeth as it grinds the feet. Uh, 
This spleen, you can see, is not as uh, normal colored as the one that we saw before. It, it may or may not have a problem. It's about half the size of the proventriculus. But um, if you do see any kind of a spotty type spleen like that, that might be an indication of, a, of an infection. And then down here, we see the conglomeration of the intestines where they fit. Now, there's three lobes to the kidneys, and there are these brown areas, and there's, there's a kidney on each side. So if we were to move all this out of the way, we would be able to see that on this side, there's an identical um, set of three lobes of kidneys along that side. You want to look at that? This is the normal color of a kidney. Sometimes it'll have a little bottled look, um, and that could be normal, but if it's uh, excessive, it could mean it's uh, dehydrated. It could mean that there's uh, some gout going on and, um, or some other types of problems, but this is a normal color that you would see with a kidney. So now we're kind of looking at this stuff from from a, a little different angle. This is a beautiful picture of a lung. That's the kind of lung you want to see. It's pink. It, you can see the, the sponginess to it. And if you were to, to shell that out of the, the body cavity and put it in some water, it would float to the surface. It's, uh, it, it has no consolidation to it uh, whatsoever. And um, then off to the side, we can see what we saw before. And you can see that the air sac uh, covering is is pretty good. Most of that is just the camera that's showing that uh, real cloudiness there. And uh, the ovary I talked about before. What's interesting about ovaries is that um, every um, egg that the chicken will ever lay is actually somewhere, somewhere present in that ovary at the time of hatch. And so it just depends on, um, you know, when they're stimulated uh, to, to mature, then those those uh, yolks will start forming. And there's plenty of them, over 10,000, so you never have to worry about your, your chicken running out of uh, eggs, yolks for eggs. Here's the, the kidney again that's nested right up inside the, the body cavity, uh, a good looking kidney. Now let's take the intestinal system out so you can kind of get an idea of what to, what it is. Now, the esophagus would be up here, and then if you even followed it further up, you would see the, the crop coming off of it, but I've taken that off. And here's the, the proventriculus, the true stomach, because it goes into the gizzard. Um, there's muscles in there, smooth muscles, that will grind that feed and get it, um, get it to the point where it can start to be digested, and it'll go up the ascending and descending loops of the of the duodenum, excuse me, and um, that's where digestion really starts there. Now, I just want to make a point here to the pancreas, which um, gives some enzymes out, um, digestive enzymes is in between the loops of the duodenum. Pancreas is also where the insulin is, is formed um, for sugar di digestion too. So. Um, that's a normal looking pancreas. A lot of times it'll be a, a lot paler than that. It'll look kind of pinkish. If it looks white and chalky looking, uh, that's an indication that there's pancreatitis going on, inflammation of the pancreas, and there, there's some problems there. Um, and then we follow up through the intestinal tract. And by the way, that's the gallbladder. The, the liver's been taken off here, but the gallbladder uh, will actually um, put the bile into the system, which helps in fat digestion. So if, if by chance you open a, a bird up and the gallbladder is quite large and it's gonna be, be kind of a, a greenish or blue color, and you'll see it right uh, nested next to the, to the liver, um, a lot of times that indicates that the, the chicken hasn't eaten recently because the, it hasn't uh, pushed any bile into the system. So that's one thing you can kind of look at to see if the if it's been eating along with the crop, if there's feed in it, and, and also if there's feed in the rest of the digestive tract. But as it goes down, uh, we see a normal uh, small intestine here. And it goes down into uh, a, a place where there's three things that come together. And um, these blind pouches are called cica. They are very variable and look 
too, uh, particularly the inside of them. Uh, usually it'll be a kind of a dark brownish looking stuff. Uh, it can be green looking. And um, depending on if there's the sequel content has been um, expelled recently, there can be quite a lot of it in there. And so you might uh, cut into that sequel and have a lot of stuff come out of there and you wonder, ooh, uh, what's going on here? And, and oftentimes it's, um, it doesn't smell too good either. So. Um, Usually, if there's a problem with a Sika, it's going to be um, there's, it's going to be really hard and cheesy type stuff in there, or it's going to be really um, um, possibly runny, and that type of thing. But um, a normal Sika content will be green a lot of the times, and it and it has a smell to it. So that doesn't necessarily mean that something's wrong. Um, chickens don't have Pyrus patches, as uh, mammals do, Pyrus patches are a conglomeration of, of uh, lymphoid tissues uh, throughout the, the gut, and that helps in immunity. But what they do have is is these what they call sequel tonsils right at this juncture here, and um, it's called the ileal sequel junction. Junction. Normally they're they're kind of pinkish colored, um, but if you see a lot of um, hemorrhage in the, that area. And, or they, they look really swollen and, and kind of grape-like, then that's an indication that they, they, have a, uh, they could have a, a bad viral disease of some sort. Then we come down to the end. Uh, I thought I had a picture of the cloaca, but um, the cloaca at the end here is, um, is a common port of uh, embarkation, I guess you could call it, of the, of the urinary system, the digestive tract, and the um, and also the reproductive tract of the bird, and and uh, there's a another really interesting organ that's called the bursa fabricius right here on that um, uh, it's above the cloaca, it's on uh, dorsal to it, and um, this is also a, a place where the chicks will be exposed a lot of the times their first exposure to um, um, Disease antigens, uh, other things that will will uh, cause a response that the bird will produce antibodies to, and uh, so this kind of helps helps in um, in the immune process. But the interesting thing is, is that there's a a particular type of cell called the B cell, and um, it's named after the birth of Fabricius, and, and even in, in mammals and, and in us, uh, we have these B cells, and it's named that, even though we obviously don't have a bursa. So now we, we come into um, a chicken that this particular one is, is more into the production end of things. Um, there are the, these ovaries, these ova that are expanding, and uh, the yolk, of course, is inside. And they will be deposited into the oviduct, and then, of course, down, and um, in a way they'll they'll go um, and be laid. You can kind of see down here; it's almost out of the picture, and I hadn't noticed that till just now. But there's a, a cystic ovary. Um, the left oviduct in the chicken is the one that's active, and so on the right side, um, there's not an active oviduct. It usually doesn't form; it's just kind of vestigial. In this particular case, and, and this occurs quite frequently in chickens, uh, that that will form will fill with water and form kind of a cyst. In fact, sometimes it can get so large that it'll almost fill the the whole um, salomic cavity there, the abdominal cavity, and um, and so if you see something like that that's coming off the the distal end here of the chicken um, tract, that's what it probably is. So yeah, that's something that you'll see eventually if you open up enough chickens. Uh, this is the healthy oviduct here. Um, of course, that's where the albumin is put on and then down further the, the, the eggshell. And if we were to tease that out, this is kind of what it looks like. You've got your, your ovary and then these are ova or the, the eggs that will eventually um, fall down into this into the oviduct itself, and um, and like I say, once they come into to uh, sexual maturity, they'll start. These things will start expanding, and here we have ones that are, are ready to go. And um, and so as they as they mature, you notice that they have a, have these um, capillaries around them, and so that's normal. 
but they have an area that's that's called the stigma and that'll actually break open then the yolk will, will come out and fall into the the oviduct through the infundibulum and once in a while these capillaries will break and, and that's what will give you the your um, blood spots in your eggs that you'll eventually see if you raise enough eggs in your backyard so um, this is a normal ovary and um, the I put this picture in here to remind me that to always look at the uh, the vent area. This is the vent of the chicken um, to to see if it's been picked, if there's any kind of parasites on there. Uh, you can look at this before you even start cutting into the bird. Just uh, after you've washed it off, just to turn it over and look at it, and uh, you'll notice that there's there's quite a lot of coloration, uh, yellow coloration in this particular vent area, and that's telling us that this chicken has not been laying eggs lately. Now this is a legerin and so they they will have uh, yellow skin and so this is um, telling us that uh, that pigment has not really disappeared there. And we're not going to talk about the lay cycle here but uh, that's one thing that you'll see in yellow skinned um, breeds. One thing I want to mention too is that um, it's always a good idea to kind of look at the bones in the chickens and to see how things look. And there's a, a good area right here, joint that you wanna cut into. In fact, uh, when you take your whole chicken home and cut in, into it, uh, that's cutting off the thigh and the drumstick. So that, that's that uh, joint right there that you want to look at. So just take your knife and, and um, kind of cut there and then flex the leg enough that you can see where that joint is and then cut right through there on an angle. And then that'll open that up. And then you just take your knife and slice off the top of the of the the bone. And now we have the top part of the bone here, and this is showing you the growth plate. And this is normal bone spicules that are being formed, and uh, that's what you want to see. However, particularly in um, meat type chickens, there are some abnormalities, and I haven't shown any abnormalities in this particular. Um, video but I do want to uh, show you a couple here is that y you can appreciate up here that something's wrong you've got this big plug of tissue right here and there, that growth plate does not come smoothly across this is called um, well this is all cartilage down here and it's uh, dyschondroplasia uh, dys it's uh, dysplastic cartilage that shouldn't be there and this happens uh, sometimes uh, in fast growing birds such as broilers and, and, and turkeys. And it's on the inside of the, of the bone, inside of the leg, and it is very painful um, to the chicken. And so if you, if you see any that are limping and things like that, you wanna be sure and look at that, and see if there's any kind of a bone problem. And what often happens is you get infection around that thing too. Now, sometimes this will break off as the, as the bird grows and form a, uh, an area inside the bone and then you'll get some osteomyelitis forming um, inside there. Uh, in real mild cases a lot of times it'll just resorb and, and go away but this is a pretty this is a pretty uh, nasty uh, plug of cartilage in that bone and it's not just going to go away. So if you cut in there and, you, and this this tissue is not um, very firm it kind of breaks away and you can see these kind of whitish areas in there uh, that's a uh, that's telling you that there's some bone infection going on. And uh, so that's kind of what, what you want to look at. So th these are abnormal and uh, this is the normal. So you want to make sure that uh, you have a good idea of what that looks like. This will usually be something you want to look at in, in growing birds. If you have adult hens, it's not necessary, but um, if you see any kind of limping or problems like that, it's always just a good idea to look. And, uh, if you, and I think that's pretty much, uh, it as far as the general opening of a chicken and uh, looking for normal tissues. And so now, um, are there any questions? Okay, we're now gonna open it up to questions. That was a great presentation, Dr. Frame. I liked it as usual. Uh, you can either type your questions in the chat box or you can type them in the Q and A uh, box. Either one will work. Um, 
while you're thinking about your questions, I just wanted to put out our um, Facebook page in case you haven't seen it Oops. yet. Um, that is where we post uh, what's coming up in webinars, what are the uh, latest news, um, interesting facts that come out in the news, um, when the recordings are available, reminders of past recordings and things like that. And then um, we have a website for um, e-extension that has uh, all the upcoming webinars links posted. It has the articles on various topics. It has recordings from past webinars. And um, what else does it, oh, it has a blog. Um, it has an ask an expert feature. Um, I don't know what else it has. Anyway, it has a lot of things on it <laughs> that are of interest to small and backyard flock owners. So um, I'm not seeing any questions. I guess you did an excellent job and nobody has any questions. Well, I just want to end with um, making sure that if you do think you've got any kind of problems out there, get them to the diagnostic lab and, and um, have have the experts take a look at them for you so that um, if there's anything you can do um, to help your flock, then they can help you out that way. Yeah, we want to prevent things from spreading too much. So, okay, so um, I'm not seeing any questions. So thank you very much for attending and um, I hope you will attend our next webinar, um, which I'll have to look up to see what it is because um, it's been a while since I scheduled them. Uh, where are we? Uh, the next one is uh, March 10th on the poultry human bond. Should be an interesting conversation on uh, the relationship and um, the bonds that can be made between poultry and human. Um, what was the April 14th? I shouldn't have shut down before I looked at it completely. In April, we have raising pullets for egg production. Yes, so th those are the two main ones coming up. Um, we are working on some youth program ones as well. And if you have any topics that you would like to see a webinar for that do not have recordings up already, feel free to email me and let me know and we can try and schedule something on the topic that you are interested in. So um, again, thank you very much for coming and uh, the recording should be available shortly.